name's Scott Hagen. I'm with uh, Major Rugby. I'm the Director of Development. Uh, previously to that, I was with uh, San Diego Legion, the COO, and before that, I was with some local teams, the coach and the administrator in Southern California. So I've been in the youth game since 2006. Um, been in rugby since 2000, 1990. So I've got two parts to this presentation. One is uh, player pathway. How do you think LR as a player? Right? And the second part is, is what you've probably heard probably three or four times already in various pieces is how do you grow the youth game? And this is about what MLR is doing to work with uh, the national level and also the state level groups. Uh, so I'm going to go over the, the player stuff first. Um, so the MLR is constantly looking for new talent for the senior academy and U23 teams. Constantly. We've got COVID now, we've got injuries as you know happen all the time. We got players who can't get in the country because of the, the immigration COVID rules. And a lot of teams are always looking for players. Okay. Um, when you get to college, the, the rules are if you are a college player that's going to graduate in the spring or summer, you have to be declared for the draft. The way it's set up is if you are if you are a college eligible athlete and you want to go to the MLR, you have to declare for the draft. The MLR, then if you do get drafted, it's called a draft and chase for the player rights. They have they have to the midpoint of that season to sign you. You can either sign and move to wherever you get selected, or you can not sign, but you can't play until that period ends. And after that, you're free agent, you can sign wherever you want. Okay. Uh, the reason we have the draft is because it it, it provides uh, emphasis on the college game, and it's a connection point where MLR can can raise awareness of the college game. Like last year, you know, Lindenwood had a bunch of players drafted. I watched the Legion guys watch that draft. Like, ah, oh, I remember him. I played against him in Lindenwood, and he's great. Uh, it creates this connection that if it's all free agents, we all graduate whoever we want. It doesn't create the visibility. It doesn't create the the pointing back to the successful college teams. Now, that's not to say you got to go to D one school to be an MLR player. A lot of those guys didn't go to a Cal Berkeley or Lindenwood. They all a lot of them went to smaller schools and, and came up through the ranks. So uh, that's not a be all end all. Um, if you are out of college eligibility, or you're you're in your 23s, or you didn't go to college, or whatever, you are eligible to sign an MLR contract immediately. So if you're in college, college draft. If you're not, you can sign right away. Is the, the basics of that. So, how does this work? MLR combines. Uh, this is being the details are being worked on as we speak. They should be announced shortly on the website and social media. But the MLR combines are open for everybody. They will, will probably have a couple. They're deciding where and when. Um, the last time we had it was last August. So that's that's the window, usually around August. It's being tweaked and discussed with all the COVID regulations and things in place. So that's coming from the competition side, which I'm not part of. But that will be announced shortly, so players can start planning for that. Combine, much like tomorrow, you go there, you get tested, they get some data points, they do some games, it's videotaped. Uh, at the MLR combine, there'll be MLR coaches there. Tomorrow, it's going to be recorded and sent to the MLR teams because they're, they're all getting ready for the season, so they're not here. Um, but the data is being collected for the MLR teams. So tomorrow, that data will be shared with the MLR teams for the players that are here tomorrow. The draft, as I mentioned, uh, that's usually mid August. That's also going to be announced shortly. In addition to that, is teams have talent ID camps. So if you don't get drafted or you're not in college or you're already graduated college, you can go to a, a, each team has an ID camp. It's basically a combine for that team. New England and New York did one together last year. But what it does is it gets kids in front, gets players in front of those coaches. So if you want to, you know, I want to go to California or I want to go to Texas or I, I really like New York, you can go to those ID camps and get on the radar directly. There's also uh, websites have academy develop, slash development and sometimes they have recruitment pages. So you can actually, if you have a highlight film, which every record player should have their highlight film, you can send that directly to the teams. The recruitment pages are normally for international players who can't get in front of the coaches on the combine, but that is another option. Is there any questions on that before I pivot to the youth? Yeah. What do you look for on a good highlight reel? Like, hmm? oh, what is a good highlight reel for an MLA player? Uh, I asked that very question, and what I've heard from coaches, from head coaches, is five to seven minutes, they want to see. Basic skills, how can you pass, mm -hmm. tackle, 
general rugby skills, but then also what skills for your position. Mm -hmm. If you're a lock, just throw some lineouts in there. You know, some scrum downs. If you're a fly half, you know, you're kicking prowess. If you're a goal kicker, some kicks for some of your difficult like, kicks for goal. Just so they get a feel for what your abilities are, both as a rugby player and then what position specific skills do you have. Now remember, um, that all sounds good, but you got about 30 seconds of attention span of a coach to look at this video. So it's gotta be good. Yeah. And if they like it, they'll watch it. If you if you send um, 10 videos or a 20 minute video, they're, I ain't got time for that. You know, So that's, that's just the reality of it. Which is why it's good to send those videos in as an introductory, but then get in front of them at the combine or an ID camp is what I would recommend to every athlete. Any questions on that? Okay, so I'm going to pivot to the youth. So I showed this slide to the owners' meetings in October, and it really caught them off guard. Can you see that? What well, can you do? There's 53.6 million kids in the United States between 5 and 18. 45,000 play rugby, which means there's basically 53.6 million kids who don't. Okay, we are we're a very small fish in a very big pond. Um, the 45, we spend a lot of time and energy on the 45,000, which we should, that's why we're here. But we also gotta figure out a way to tap in at 53.6 million, which is also why we're here, right? So in September of 21, MLR and USA Ethan High School signed a memo of understanding to work together to develop programs and initiatives that will further develop rugby in the United States and in the United States. So for those you don't know, when USA rugby went bankrupt and shattered apart. You know, I'm sure you, you know, the NCR and the ACR and the CRAA and the NIR, all these college conferences. USC from high school came out of that and all of the state organizations, Wisconsin with rugby, SoCal with rugby, rugby Texas, all went together to form this youth in high school. So I'm working with youth in high school on some national stuff, but also working with Wisconsin youth rugby on state city stuff, like all the, the flag programming you, you may have heard earlier today. Uh, and I'll touch on that briefly. So we're approaching this from a national level and the state level. So we have uh, some what we're calling growth initiatives. In that memo of understanding, there's about 11 items that we want to tackle. About four of them uh, we've made progress on enough to, to talk about. The rest of them are probably a two or three year window. But the first one's the rugby network. The key objective there is to get as many eyes on rugby across the country as possible. Now right now it's a little bit MLR centric. We want to get non-MLR programming on there. We want to get state high school championship games on there, college games on there, uh, select side games on there, uh, men's and women's club games on there. If there's a, we we're calling it elite, but if it's a high level game, like the Wisconsin State Championship game, we want that on the rugby network. Um, the difference between the rugby network and other streaming services like Flow Rugby does a great job in their product. You, you watch one of those games, it's, it's well produced, it's got scoreboards, commentators, it's a really nice product, but you gotta pay to, to watch it, right? It's because they pay for all that production in-house. Rugby never doesn't do that. It's free. The reason it's free is they don't pay for anything. So if you're gonna have a Wisconsin State Championship game on Rugby, you have to figure out how you're gonna pay for production here and then send the signal fully produced to the Rugby Network, that's the difference. Now, that's roughly five to $10,000 a game if you're paying out of pocket, but you can get sponsors for it. You can get, uh, if you have production capabilities in your universities, and talking to one of the college conferences, they wanna do a game of the week on the rugby network. The idea there is they're gonna connect with their universities, their TV production classes and their teachers and say, we've got a senior project for you guys that if you guys produce this game and you get two college commentators to commentate the game, we can get you on the wide, wide web, right? So the schools are interested in that because you're providing not only the rugby team benefit, but also a fully separate department of benefit and, and education to get their stuff produced and put on a high level. So there's ways to get around that stick of shock. Yeah. Sorry, two questions. Yeah. One, um, if production meets, uh, meets standards, is, that like, is there a pre-approval process? The standards are pretty basic. Um, I have them, and I've already sent them to, to rugby, uh, Wisconsin Youth Rugby. They have them. Okay. I just gave them caveman about 10 minutes ago. Okay. But basically, 1080, um, 
So high def. Yep. 10 megabytes per second. Yep. Uh, as far as graphics, they want to have a scoreboard graphic. Yep. And commentators. Okay. That's really about it. And beyond so, that, anything beyond that is extra. Like if you want to do lineup cards okay. or a sponsor, like a scoreboard, like if you watch an analog game, they got a scoreboard frame that's got a logo of a sponsor, and you can sell that, do it. And and so and we could have like because we usually have uh, like a little a little bit of beginning uh, videos from our sponsors. That's totally fine. Yep. Um, is it? Uh, do we do some like? Does Rugby Network own the stream afterwards? Like, do we have to? Like, that, that's yeah. negotiated. That we negotiate with you. They want to own okay. the streaming rights. Do they have the global rights to for two things? They don't own it. They don't own content. Okay. You do. First one. Got it. Um, do they have the global rights to broadcast it, or is it regional? They need to geofence it in some way. Got it. Um, at this level, it's, there's rarely any rights to, to discuss, so, but they, that's got to be clarified. Okay. Um, when they do not MLR program, NCR is on right now. They'll broadcast it live, and then it's off. It's not. Yeah. Gotcha. It's not like an MLR game where you can watch it three days from now. Mm -hmm. They broadcast it live, and then you have the content. Throw it on your YouTube channel, whatever you have. Gotcha. Um, okay. So it's really just a streaming service. But we want to get Rugby Network as as is the home of North America, right? both U.S. and Canada. We had the Canadian Collegiate National Championships. Uh, if you remember that? Uh, for some reason, they played them in Toronto in the winter. Um, it's always fun watching Rugby in the snow. But what they did was they had Queen's University. Um, Queen's University produced it. They had a college lady commenting the games, and they just flipped a switch and it went, it went on the Rugby Network, which is really cool. And if you guys haven't seen it, this is what it looks like. Uh, again, if you go across the top there, they have channels for each team. They have uh, like, like they have some podcasts that they, when they're recording, they film it. So those podcasts are on there, like the Rugby Rant and some Earful of Dirt, stuff like that. Um, all the MLR games from last year, you can, log, you can log in right now and watch every game from last year of the MLR season. And they want to get things like, they have some short form content, interviews, highlight films. If there was like a Wisconsin State high school highlight film that you wanted on there, you could get that on there. Um, or college, you know, if you have select size, women's, whatever it is, they want that short form content as well. And it's free. If you haven't been on there, uh, you just log in. They want your email address so they can hit you with marketing emails. But there's no, they don't take your credit card number or anything. Uh, so it's surprisingly easy. Two questions. Is, yep. it, is it okay that I keep asking stuff? Yeah. Okay, one. Um, short term goal of the rugby network is to get as rugby in front of as many people as possible. Right. Is that also the long term goal? The long term goal will be at some point. They will have some premium content that they'll charge for, okay. four or five bucks a month. Right, and I mean, and so if you, when I sketch that out in my mind, there's like I'm paying for MLR content, but I'm not paying for Wisconsin State. No, so you'll be paying for big games. You're okay. not gonna be paying for high school stuff. Yeah, that's what that's the vision. I, the vision that I that they told me is local stuff is gonna be get kids and grandparents and parents watch their network. Right. You want to watch this game that's all black for so whatever it is. Okay, well we got that's a big production. We got to pay for that. Yeah. That kind of stuff. We're not we're not intending to put local content behind the paywall. Yeah. And are you? So you mentioned like the all black game, right? Are you? Is that part of the big plan for this as well? So that like um, this place becomes where you watch as opposed to Fox or something like that. Uh, I wouldn't say that. Okay. And I have to be careful there because that stuff's under contract. Totally. So I must avoid that one. Okay. But uh, the Rugby Network is part of Rugby Pass, which is part of Sky Sports. Yeah, yeah. Right? So you'll see a lot of things out here, you know, stuff from Rugby Pass on the bottom line, on the content. It's because there is some European content being shared. But when it comes to that stuff, that's beyond me. Yeah. Um, and there's contracts involved, and I don't want to tamper with okay. that stuff. So. But just to cover, when you say, like, you're also interested in some short form content. So, like, if we did, like, a team profile or something or a story, yeah. Sure. Three, five minutes. That's in conjunction with one of our events. You played like that too. If, yes. Okay. If you have like a, a a three to five minute clip about team one and team two in your state championship game. Yep. Yeah, they want that. If you have post game interviews with the captains and the coaches, whatever, they want that too. Yeah. Yep. And if if when we get to that point, I can connect uh, you guys with them directly. You can sort out the details. And the legalities and the rights and all that stuff. 
Okay, the other, uh, the, the flagship program we've been doing is the PE flag rugby. Have you guys heard about this already today? It's, it's been talked about four times. So I'll, I'll go over it very quickly. Um, um, but the goal, as you've heard, is to get it in the PE, middle school, and high school programs. We want to make uh, rugby an American sport. You know, it's really cool when you hear these cool accents and the hakas and all that stuff. It needs to be an American sport. And the way you do that is you get to school so kids know it. As, as, as I mentioned before and as, as Moose said earlier, you know, you roll a basketball out there, you know what to do with it. Football, you know what to do with it. Rugby ball, they don't know what the hell it is. But that's the problem. Um, we've done this, uh, we did this this school year. Uh, we beta tested this in about two thirds of the MLR cities. A couple of them were still really hit hard with COVID, so they didn't do it this year. But we also had North Carolina, Connecticut, Rugby, Indiana, Ohio, and Colorado do it as well. Just to kind of tell you, we went some, the schools we knew would do it, do some lessons learned. Uh, ways to bring the costs down. Phase two, which will be for next year, which we just talked about earlier, uh, rugby, uh, Wisconsin youth rugby is going to be involved. So we're going to identify what schools we want to target in Wisconsin. Um, Illinois is going to get involved as well. Ohio is going to expand on it. And we're going to see how many schools we want to target. And then my job is to get sponsorships to pay for it. Both as local sponsorships to pay for it. And then if we have the number of schools by March, we'll get the kit delivered by August. That's the, that's the time. The balls are they're coming from India and China. Just that's all it takes. Um, and the, the, the important part is to create that connection between the schools and the youth clubs. So, again, you've heard this before. We don't want it to be a here's the bag of balls, drop and go. It's we're teaching the teachers how to teach rugby. And then the youth clubs go to help them. Because if they walk in and the teacher is going to say, All right, I'm going to do, say, I'm going to work on receiving a pass, I would really like somebody from the local youth club to come in and help me. And so when they come in there and those kids are playing catch with a high school player or a college player and they're wearing their t-shirt, they're going to have so much fun. They say, hey, I want to keep doing this after school. Oh, yeah, he wore a, I'll say Green Bay because I just came from a Green Bay talk, a Green Bay Youth Rugby Club shirt. I'm going to go play for that. Or an Oshkosh team or whatever, whatever the local team is. So we're trying to create that connection so when they play it in the grade schools, they have so much fun, they try not to play it in your youth clubs. And once you get them there, that's, that's the goal. Question? Mm -hmm. And do, when that's done ideally, do you imagine like first contact is with Jim and then the, the kid will eventually be part of a youth club that's separate from the school or a part of the school? Depends on how you have it set up in each state. Each okay. state's different. Um, what I envision here from what I've learned so far is they play flag in the schools and then they join your flag leagues, third and fourth, fifth grades. That's the third's the lowest it goes. Some of us go down to first and second. Okay, so whatever it is, you know, if, so if you go down to first and second and you target that age grade in the schools, then you create that bond. They just come out second grade and they're playing from the same exact game. They're just playing on the gym or the blacktop and now they're playing for you on the field. That's what we want to get. And the, the parents learn it, the kids love it, and then you just create wave after wave after wave. And the idea is you always backfill with the youngest. You know, I'm sure you've heard this three times a year also. You always back to the youngest, so when they start getting older and you start in high schools, like it's a long play, but like in Southern California, we've we've got about 20 kids at every high school, every year freshman class been playing for eight years, every year. Now it took a long time to get there, but once you get there, it's great. Cause you're not great having to hunt freshmen, bring your friend, you know, and teach them how to throw the ball left-handed. That's exhausting. Um, this is a way to, to, to get that way of going. So it kind of accomplishes several goals at once. You've seen this before. Who knows this with Moose? But uh, this is what the skill, there's skill cards and game cards. The skill cards, this is Rookie Rugby. That program's been around forever. Uh, we've added QR codes to the videos and we've updated. Lower right corner is, is the new part. It's mapped to Wisconsin State Standards. So you can take this into a grade school and the teachers know immediately, this is already been mapped. So if I'm a third grade teacher and I need to do some more mani manipulation on my metrics, you can actually use flag rugby now to, to actually check those boxes off in your metrics. The goal is, teachers say, all right, I'm gonna do basketball, I'm gonna do flag rugby, I'm gonna do kickball, I'm gonna do whatever the other is. It's just another option for the teacher. It's not some weird foreign, I don't know what I'm doing, please come do this for me. It's say, oh yeah, I've, I've already done how to do this. Again, it's got these, you read it, the coaching cues, okay, receiving the pass. I'm not a rugby coach, I'm a teacher in grade school. 
You QR code that, you can watch that video for 90 seconds, you know how to run the drill. You've got a bag of balls in front of you, you've got the sets, sets of flags in front of you, you're off and running. It shows you, you want to teach these points, you want to make sure you keep correcting those points, and then when you're done doing this drill for 10 minutes, go to those connected games. In this case, we'll, do, we'll look at relay races. Okay, here's how you set up that grid, here's how long you should do it, here's what you're looking to teach, here's the QR code, scan it, you can watch it, oh, okay, that makes sense. And then, game progression is, if you're teaching third graders, you might need to keep it simple. If you're teaching sophomore in high schools, they can figure it out pretty quick. So, okay, add a defender, spread out the cones. How do you make this more difficult? Um, those are the game progressions. So you teach them this skill, key concepts, and you go back to the next drill. All right, we've done receiving, we've done, we've done catching the pass, we've done throwing the pass, and receiving the pass. Okay, now, that's been 20 minutes. Now we're going to work on evasion. Or now we're going to go play, and tomorrow we're going to do evasion, defense, and what up, you know, a third one. And so within a, an hour or two, you can get these kids running around playing flag rugby. And the good thing about this is it's, it's flexible. So if teachers, what we learned in Southern California, the, when we built this, the assumption was there's one PE teacher per grade school. So that's what I grew up with. That's what they were probably grew up with. But and there's some areas in Southern California where you have one PE teacher for five or six schools because it's not the money. So a teacher hits that school on Monday for 45 minutes. That school on Monday afternoon for 45 minutes. That was on Tuesday. That was on Tuesday afternoon. So these kids are getting about 45 minutes of PE class of a, of a PE teacher. And the rest of the time, it's the homeroom teacher throwing a ball out there and making them run around. So whatever length of time and contact points the teachers have with the students, you can adjust this. I'm going to do three skills and we're playing. Okay, well, I've got two weeks. I'm going to do eight skills and play. So it's flexible, which is teacher, something teachers like. Any questions on that? Again, I'm sure you've heard that over and over. And these, these skill cards are already posted on Wisconsin Youth Rugby. So you can print these out right now and start going. If this, if this helps the youth leagues, take it, do it. This is not intended to be um, dictated to you guys. This is just another option for you guys to use if, it help, if it's helpful. If you've already got a PE, if you've already got flag programs in schools, if you don't need it, no worries. Another one working on the NLR academies. This is similar to what has been going on around the country already. But the NLR academies are designed to teach rugby at an elite level. The intention here is, as I'm sure it is everywhere, is not to step on club and high school programming. It's intended, we'll, we'll train them during the year, go back and make your high school and club teams better. And after the high school championships in May, we'll launch our academy teams. But we'll do a competition. And we'll have you know, Legion will play LA, we'll play Seattle, we'll play Utah, and then the Texas will play each other. And we're trying to figure out what that's going to look like from the championships. But we are intending to support the high school efforts and the clubs. We're not intending to be the replacement of those efforts. You know, some, some sports have, you either play your high school teams pretty crummy and you have a super powerhouse club team, right? Soccer, for example, in Southern California. High school teams are terrible. The clubs are where it's at. Volleyball is another example. We don't want to do that. We want, we want the talent to be in the schools and the youth clubs, and this is additional programming after that. Um, from a YHS perspective, I'm working with YHS to come up with some national rules as far as defining what the seasons are, because every region has different seasons because of the weather, right? In Southern California, we're actually in rugby season right now in high school. Um, obviously, that doesn't work here. Uh, so we want to make sure that Wisconsin Youth Rugby um, in the academies to extend this idea that we're all playing nice in the sandbox, right? We want to, we want to develop the kids without competing on, on the schedules. All right, community colleges. I know Wisconsin not a big community college state, I've learned. But what we're doing here that, uh, can translate here with the U18, U20 team. So we, there's a massive drop off from the kids who play high school rugby to go to college. 89% of kids who play high school don't play college rugby. They either go to school, doesn't have a rugby team, they don't go to school, and the only option is playing for an adult team. Well, a lot of kids, myself included, when I was 18, I wasn't big enough to play against 23 year olds. I just wasn't physically ready for that, right? So what we're trying to do is, in, with community colleges, 
the MLR teams, we're going to reach out to two or three community colleges in our areas and create a community college league. And then we're going to try and lessons learned and expand that out to the other states. So when I say these programs are focused on MLRs, because we want to learn all our lessons in a friendly environment before we roll it out. Uh, as that would translate here, if teams, if, if there's player pool, if there's capacity, you know, consider having a U18s or U20s competition, a team there to bridge that gap between the high schools and the adults, if it's needed. Um, you know, again, with, with the 80 percent drop off between high schools and the adult leagues, there's, there's, there's space for something there. If community colleges aren't the answer up here, that's fine, but maybe, maybe it's a, 20, a U20 competition. Again, I'm not terribly familiar with, with the adult leagues here, but that, that's something to think about. And it goes with the same uh, idea. Any questions on those? Those are the, the programs we've had the most success with so far uh, since September. And there'll be more coming this year, so hopefully by the end of the MLR season, there'll be a couple really cool announcements we can share. So going back to this, again, 53.6 million versus 45,000. Now this is how we stack up against other sports. There's almost 9 million kids who play soccer. There's almost 8 million kids who play basketball. We have 45,000. That was pre-COVID. Uh, we took a big hit, obviously, last year when we were coming back. But we are light years behind as other sports. Uh, our philosophy is, my, my personal philosophy is to stop playing. You know, the things that Americans needed after rugby, which we've all done, but there's things that right needs to adapt to Americans, right? You know, back in the day, you know, your parents, at least where I'm from, you had know, one through 15. Well, my son's always wore number 22. He's a football player. Why are you wearing number 77? That's not how I do it. You know, these little things that we've been doing in rugby forever, Americans need to adapt to that. But there's things that rugby needs to adapt to Americans, right? Uh, there's things that we do here with that they don't. The concept of youth, high school, college, draft, pro, is completely alien to a lot of the foreign guys. What do you mean? You have a draft? What's that mean? You have the rights to that. doesn't make any sense. The way we do it over in Wales is you have the Welsh, you have the national team, you have the provincial teams, you have the club teams, you have youth teams, and they all fall straight up. Well, this isn't Wales, right? Um, the fact that you can trade a player in the pro leagues here is they, we traded a player once, and they're like, what do you mean you traded a player? You can't do that. Like, yeah, you can do that. This is America. We trade players. We talk about that. You know, there's a lot of things that are common sense to American sports fans that it's, it's, it's weird to rugby, and that's just the way it is. We want to make this an American sport. And what I want to do, what we're, what MLR wants to do in the youth development is, we want to get rugby into the Amer existing American sports infrastructure. You know, again, college terms with NCR, ACR, CRA, NRA. Women might be NCAA, but there's nothing in NAIA, there's nothing in the junior colleges, there's nothing in the CCCAA, which is the California Community Colleges. We've never approached that. Only one state has varsity rugby certified by the state. That's Massachusetts. Pennsylvania now they're doing emerging sports. Uh, so Pennsylvania will be a varsity sport uh, soon. But it's not with WIAA here. We're a long way away from that. You know, we've been working for 10 years in California at CIF. We're still probably three years away from that. Texas just started talking to them, right? But if you want to get the 53.6 million kids, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times when my son was 10-ish, talking to parents, you know, hey, you should play rugby. Your kids should play rugby. It's great. It's fun. Da, da, da. Like, oh, yeah, I remember rugby from college. Yeah, it was great. You guys are crazy. There's no way my son was playing that game. <laughs> it's changed. It's changed a lot since then. And you got to go through all that. Oh, we don't stop on each other anymore. You know, we're not doing that. You get varsity status, you get WIA certification, and a, a non-rugby parent will immediately know it's a legitimate sport, right off the bat. It is a varsity sport, men's and women's. That's where we need to get to, right? So that's gonna take a long time, uh, but we're working with YHS holistically, and I've made you contact with Richard and, and Moose and those guys for, for Wisconsin on. Uh, we, we're gonna help with strategies, lessons learned from other areas, some things won't fit here because you've got such a strong flag program. You know, the, the, the ideas we have like in Southern California, we play tackle at tens, doesn't work here, right? Your flag program is great. I'm taking some of those lessons. I'm taking back to Southern California because there's like, we don't have middle school stuff there. You play youth all the way to high school. 
we don't have a, a middle school league at all. Um, so there's a lot of uh, connecting dots, communicating, and, and lessons learned across these events um, that we're hopefully we'll be able to create these strategies that might work in you know, work in Wisconsin um, to get to these ultimate goals. And that is it. Um, do you have any questions? Any thoughts, comments, suggestions? What you've seen work? What didn't work? Um, do you are you play? I do. Yes. What, what level do you play? I in the spring I play with the girls middle school rugby club. So you're in the middle school ranks. Yes, oh. and in fall because we don't have a middle school girls, um, you know, I play with the high schoolers in Madison. Okay. So. Yeah. So one one thing we've learned to, to remedy that issue that you don't have a team to play for is the going back to the idea about always going to the youngest and just backfilling, backfilling. Because when you get these 20, 30 kids, as they, as they move up, you start creating a demand at the schools. Now, one thing we've learned repeatedly is if I have to walk into a high school or middle school and say, I want to have a rugby team here. And the example we had down there was, well, this is how we did it in France. They don't care. You walk, you know, as Moose said, don't talk to the principal, don't talk to AD. They, that's not what they, but if you have kids walk in and say, I've got 10 kids here, we want to have a rugby team here, that gets their attention. And that's, that's, that, that changes it just enough to where they'll say, okay, well, let's think about this. If, if I have kids here, you want to play the sport, we need to look into this. If I have a parent walking in, they don't care. So it's, it's creating this demand from the, from the youth and then creating demand, quite honestly, one of the reasons that we are doing the community college is if you create a demand coming back down, scholarship pathways, now you've got it coming to the school administrators, you're having this demand from students, and now there's opportunities that didn't exist before. You know, I can go play on a scholarship at a junior college, uh, or I can go play at a, at a university. You know, when they started hearing that, especially with Title IX on the women's side, right? The, the NIRA conference, for maybe for about that, that's the, uh, the NCAA, girls conference it's all based on northeast corner once they get to 40 schools that is a championship ncaa varsity sport like basketball and football women's rugby is on the path to a varsity ncaa sport we just need about 12 more teams now if we need 12 teams anywhere in the country to do that it doesn't have to be connected to NERA. it just has to be a they have to be in the varsity and the ncaa um, pathway so you can create an upper midwest league of women's varsity college teams Division one, division two, it doesn't matter what division it is. If you can create that and help you take those 26 and that gets to 40, we've got it. And now, now, so that creates scholarship pathways because now the other schools are going to say, well, that's part of the championship trophy now. We need a young one to start looking at this because now these teams now have an opportunity to get that, that, that all sports championship trophy that I keep talking about. That creates more demand and that creates more opportunities. And then you've got the high school looking at it. And it just snowballs. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create the demand from below and create the connections from the top. Because the high schools is what we want. Any other questions? <clears throat> Hopefully you've heard that message a couple times about the, the importance of the youth um, today. That's, that's really the take home message is, is focus on the youth and um, create the demand. Any other questions? You got something I can tell. You. <clears throat> I got two. Okay. Um, I got some So, um, it, it looked like the like the focus of the MLR youth development primarily is your your your, your testing lab is like the MLR cities. Right. Um, is it part of your job to look at expansion beyond that? Like, it, uh, I from the youth? Yes. Yeah. That's why I'm here. Well, I mean, and so but when you do that, like, do you expand out through like geographically in those MLR cities, or are you targeting other sort of like hot spots in other? I I am talking to anybody who will listen. Okay. Um, Rugby Wisconsin invited me to come out and talk to you guys. Jump in here. I am. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably go to Illinois next as well. Uh, but there's there is a infrastructure here that's important. That with the flag leagues and and what's going on already, you know, some of these things will help. Um, some of these things won't help, right? But what we're doing is we're, we're kind of making connections. Like I've already talked to Moose and Caveman and um, Richard 
about the record network. What can we get on the record network? How can we get MLR teams, academies out here to play the select sites? How do we make these connections? So it's not, we're not targeting, okay, I'm going to Chicago, I'm going to wherever. It's, we want to grow it, we want to grow it all over the country. Actually, all of North America, because I'm charging, I got this in Canada as well. But uh, we do it in MLR, a lot of stuff in MLR cities first. Because like, for instance, the flag program, we learned a lot of lessons there. Shipping was, killed my budget, right? Um, what worked on getting in schools? Now, Moose had a good, he knows how to get into Wisconsin schools. If I tried to roll out of Wisconsin without that knowledge, it wouldn't have worked, right? And I just spent $10,000 and stuff and sitting in the closet. So we, we learn our lessons locally, present it to groups like Wisconsin, and say, okay, here's how we did it here, how will it work for you in your area? And then we make connections and we, and we pull the trigger. So our goal is to grow the game all, all over, not just in our cities, but all over. And some of these things um, move quicker in MLR cities, like MLR academies. Yes. There's not much value to that here. But the lessons learned from those academies might be, you know, the Thunderbirds might pick up some things. We might understand the Thunderbirds or Wisconsin selects. I think that's the, the Thunderbirds are up here, right? Um, how do we do, we, do we play each other? Do we, you know, how do we get those kids in front of MLR selectors? How do we get them in the draft? How do we go to the colleges? What's the pathway if that's what they want to do? So it's, again, this first year has been a lot about just connecting dots. Um, a lot of good work is going on in a lot of silos around the country. And when you, once we start making those connections, it's starting to take off. So it's exciting. What's your other question? Well, okay. So uh, there used to be, there's been a variety of like imitation high school sort of like regional championship things over the years, the numerous incarnations. Yeah, yeah. And so, but I, so I see that, like, the part you emphasize in your academies is that you want, you want to train people that also bring that, like, that bring that success back to their home clubs. Mm -hmm. So like, is there, does, does that future include something like, you know, these sort of imitation championship stuff, or is, does that rep represent like a, a general emphasis because of the you know the coming about of youth high school rugby that you are more concerned about like highlighting and making a, a good high school team as opposed to building like a good. We leave that up to the states okay. and YHS. We we're not going to dictate terms because as we all know, um, no one likes people coming telling what to do. Especially when they've been doing it for ten years. Um, but what we want to do is in a large perspective, we want to create opportunities mm -hmm. that may or may not be of value to you. Some will, some won't, that's fine. That's, that's the way it is everywhere. Um, but we're not, we won't, you know, we'll say, suggest some things. Yeah. But if you have like a, uh, a Midwestern All-Star Challenge, if that's what organically you guys want to do, then what I would say, we need to get that on the regular network. We need to get the, those games on the, on, on the network. Or we need, if you have like a Wisconsin Select Size, we need to figure out a way to get those guys in front of them on selectors. You know, that kind of stuff is what, is what the dots will count, but we won't dictate terms. Yeah, we, we know that doesn't work. <laughs> Anything else? I can stick around talking about it. Yeah, cool. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure you guys are getting hungry. And the, what time the game start? Oh. <clears throat> Seven? There's one more session. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, there's one more session. Okay, thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.